What's up, what's up? We are live. Wait for people to come in, say hi. Can you check if I'm live on YouTube? Yes. Gary, what's up, buddy? Just waiting for people to come in, see if this thing is live, but you kind of just answer my question. How are things in Santa Monica? Malik, what's up, buddy? Amanda from Toronto, how are you guys doing? Glad you guys can chime in for a little bit. But I thought I um, I'm going to be um, I'm going to I think officially do lives on Tuesdays from six six p.m. Um, Pacific. Uh, perfect. Uh, I'm going to be doing lives, I think, at Tuesdays, 6 to 7, and then Thursdays I'll be doing meetups from there. Hey, Fabricio from the Bay Area. I appreciate that. Awesome. A couple of things that I'm going to be talking about today, and then, um, and I just, when I when I get on, I've been th I was thinking about this, and when I get on lives, um, I'm going to, because I'm so much about positivity, it's going to, I'm thinking of it like a mastermind. I think you come in, you see anything from me. I want to, you know, I, I want you to think about what you're doing, making moves, making money, if you're in the right place and, and just doing things. Three things that I thought about, and I'm going to be talking about these things and then I'll, I'll I'm going to jump in. I hope you guys have questions, but um the three things that i want to think about want you to think about and you don't even have to answer this i mean it's a rhetorical question but answer to yourselves number one what do you want i recently posted um a video that i did two years ago um and basically it was saying what do you want and I think it's a good reminder for all of us to really stop for about five minutes and really ask yourself, like, what do you want? Like, what do you want? Like, do you want a new job? Do you only want money? Do you want to work for yourself? Do you want to be valued or whatever? The, the problem is, the thing is, when you, when you stop and kind of think about what you want, then you can kind of align your daily activities towards that particular thing because most most people are going through their days basically just kind of like navigating things and 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 really not moving in a in a in a in a way that's really um proactive so the first question I, I think you guys should should think about is ask yourself, what do you want? You have to answer it in the chat. Just just it's rhetorical. Just think about what do you want? What do you want? Because I think that's that's key. And then 
The other, the other thing that I'm thinking about is ask yourself this, what did you work on today? And the things that if you would like, think about it, what did you work on today? And the things that you worked on today, did it, did it align with what you want? I think about this constantly, constantly. What did you work on today? And again, these are rhetorical questions just for people to start thinking about. And obviously we're human. So a lot of times we're not going to be aligned with, you know, working on things that, um, that that's in line with exactly where we want to go. But I think it, asking these questions to yourself, I think, you know, can get you aligned. And then number three is what are you consuming? What type of information are you consuming? Me personally, sometimes, um, I mean, me personally, I'm always consuming positive stuff. Online coaches today, Coach Michael Burt, um, David Meltzer, uh, could be Gary Vee sometimes or what have you. Consuming, 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 consuming good positive stuff that's in line with where I'm trying to go. Sometimes I'm consuming news. And then, you know, another thing was I was talking to a guy, a friend of mine today, and he was kind of like in a rut. Um, he was giving me all these excuses about, you know, oh, he can't do this job because of this this thing that he has on, on his, his, you know, his record or what have you. And it was kind of like, it was kind of like put me in a, in a, in a bad place. Um, not a bad place, but a place where it's like, it wasn't positive. Whereas when I'm thinking like all positive, 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 then, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in line with, uh, you know, and it just, it, it seems like there's like, there could be, there could be gray clouds and then there could be, you know, just like a, a sunny day. So be careful what you're consuming. So ask yourself the question, what am I consuming today? What did I consume today? Did I consume nonsense? Am I playing video games? Am I doing something? Am I doing things that's in line with where I want to go? Those are the three things that I recommend everybody kind of asking themselves rhetorically, just like rhetorical questions. And, um, you know, just think about it and get in line with, 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 um, exactly low, vib yep, low vibration. Yep. Just get in line with, um, you know, being on a positive high. That's what I think about constantly. So if you're ever thinking about, hey, what is Mike up to? I'm always thinking about moving, making moves, making moves. And right now, really at this point in my life, it's really truly not about money. It's like, it's, um, it's weird. It's about making moves and just trying to reach goals, trying to build things. Hey, I'm trying to build, I want to, you know, Mike, do I really want to build my coaching business? Do I really want to build my online business? Do I really want to do this, 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 this? And so... I'm kind of moving in that direction. So those are things that I'm always thinking about. So ask yourself these questions. Think about that. Think about that. What do I, what do you want? What did you work on today? What are you consuming? There was a time, there was a time in, uh, in, in my career about two years ago. What's up, Casey? Um, there was a time about two years ago in my career where I was like, I was in, I was in Hawaii and I was asking myself this question, like, Mike, what do I want? Because we had got to a point, my wife and I, we got to a point where we were going on two vacations a year, big vacations, nine days in Maui, just, you know, spending money here and there going on big, heavy cruises. And, um, it got to the point to where I'm looking out and I'm like, well, I can't sit on this beach for six months. Like, cause I thought to myself, is this the life? Is this the life that I want to, you know, that everybody is dreaming about, you know, being able to, to, um, to go on vacation, travel the world or do what have you. And, uh, at some point, you know, uh, at some point you get, you even get bored of, you even get bored of, uh, of, of, of seeing things that you always wanted, you know? And sometimes you have to ask yourself, what do you want? Like, what do I really want? What do I want? You know, what, what, is, what am I reaching for? Because when you get there, sometimes you'd be like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? 
a lot of things that um, I think about is uh, I read this I read this book called the 10x rule and then um, in the book it talked about there's a little nugget in there it called, talked about success success is your duty your duty and basically um this particular this particular statement um it gets deeper in there in terms of like talking about how success is your moral obligation and that's an interesting that's an interesting take uh that success is your moral obligation and what it talks about is anytime you get to like anything that ceases to exist or ceases to anything that ceases to succeed, like continuously succeed in their, uh, in, in the, um, or what have you in the universe, it eventually dies off. It was very interesting. And I thought to myself, I was on that. I was on that. I was on that, uh, that, uh, that, that vacation. And I was thinking to myself, I'm slowly going to a simmer. There's no fire in my bonfire. What's up, Beats Reloaded? Your, your, uh, he goes, hey, Mike, your advice in Academy helped me a lot uh, land a UX position. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, we're just chatting about mindset. And so when I think about success, or when I read this book, The 10X Rule, one of the things that, that stuck out to me was success is your duty. And so the goal is to continue to reach your potential. And that's, that's when you're saying like, what do I succeed at? If I'm happy, I'm happy right now. If you're, if you're happy, you want to continue to succeed basically. So if you're happy, I think of it like this, think of a jar. We're all playing at, David Goggins says we're playing at 40%. He says we're playing at 40%, even if you're living a, a good, happy life, you're, you're living at 40%. This percentage here, this is your potential. Everybody has different potential that they can reach. So some of us who don't have a job, your potential is to boost your skills and land a job. Find that island. Everybody needs an island. If you have a job, your potential could be higher. Your, your potential could be to move up in, the, in your career, to go to a director's level, or move beyond, which you can start, which that's where I say everyone needs a side hustle because that side hustle can turn into something more. And um, so I talk about Everyone needs that island. And then once you get that island, so if, if um, basically your island is your job, it's something that keeps you, that's, that just keeps you steady. Something that you can plant your feet on, take a nice breath and kind of propel yourself forward. But this right here, this is what I think about constantly. This right here is your potential. So I think we're all we're I think we're all living or we call it moving at like forty percent, fifty percent. Then there's about you know that that other half that we can get to, and you got to think about what that potential is. Think about what that potential is, and constantly work towards that. And a lot of people confuse when I say, "Hey, our duty is to work. Our purpose is to work." One of the things I think about is i think about when i think about working i don't mean working as in working a job that you don't like but working your potential so i think working is what needs to take place because when you stop working you you essentially stop succeeding so the point is you need to be working towards your potential working towards reaching your potential that's what I think about constantly, working towards reaching your potential. I posted a, another video I posted. I've been talking about this the last couple of days um, in different videos is that I think there's going to be a tech hiring surge coming in 2021. 
And I think it's important for all of us to keep that in mind. One, just to be optimistic, because I really think it's going to happen. And then two, start preparing for it. Start preparing for it. What do we have? Six months? So I think right after... Here's, here we are. This is, we're in September, October, November. November is when the election is coming. This is the end of the year, okay? This is the end of the year. Here's January, Feb, etc. So we're here. We have, I don't know how many months, what? December, September, October. We have all these months. I think the hiring surge, you'll start to see a hiring surge around February. I think, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. You got six months to start grinding on your portfolio, all of us. So William asked a question. Let me bring this question in. So how do you work a job you hate? when the money is off the chain. <laughs> you do. So the question is, so what Viz, Viz said, what, how, how, do you, how do you work a job you hate when the money is off the chain? Are you saying that if the money is crazy and the money is good, you say it's hard to hate? Uh, I've been there several times. The money was really good and I felt like a sheep. But everybody's at different levels. Everybody's at different levels. Let me let me let me show this. And this is important for all of us to understand. So one, no job. Or low paying job. All right, and then, uh, so if anybody's at this level where they're just coming into the industry and need a job, you're at number one. Either a job you hate or something, you're coming in. And here you're at this point where you have a UX design job. All right, and then you can get to different levels. Um, uh, you know, you can grow in this, in, this, in this part to where you can get senior. Let's just say, you know, you've been on the job for five to 10 years, right? And you can get to a point, even if the job is paying you well, trust me, you can get to a point to where you feel like a sheep. I felt like a sheep. Why? Because I wanted more. Hey, Asia. Um, <laughs> so wait, so Asia said, I'm seeing a big trend let me answer this question. So let me, I'll answer that question in a second. Um, so, so you're here. This is where I, I, I was for a long period of time. And then I got to a point to where I felt, you know, you may not, you may not like that job and you, you want more. And over here, you got the job plus side hustle. Right. And then, you know, you can just, just grow. And then the last one is entrepreneurship, and then you're just doing a lot. I call this beasting. But let me answer this question. Let me switch back. So Asia said, hey, Mike, I'm seeing a big UI trend for animated characters within apps and websites. What are your take on this? Do we need to learn this? Um, a great question. Uh, it's a trend. Obviously, uh, illustration il illustrations have been a trend for the last several years. Um, you know, we can go to we can go to Dribble right now, and the the first thing we'll see are animated um, illustrations. Uh, where is it? Yeah, I mean illustrations, illustrations, just all over the place, but. The answer is no. 
you don't have to you don't have to know it um, it's a it's a basically the you said earning let me see earning that it's probably online where you see the like the animated so basically animations and 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 stuff like this it's not it's it's basically um it's basically not overly common across the board but it is something that that adds engagement to um to an app i'll give you an example i was working on a huge over the last five months i was working with a company on a huge um on a huge uh, veterinarian app and in that app 99% of the, the app is just SAS UI UX, but there were little components where um, they had the need for illustrations like, um, excuse me, like when you're, when you're loading on the loading screen, um, you know, a, a cat chasing a ball, like on a, a preloader or something like that. So you had little accents of, of illustrations. And from that, you can basically outsource when it comes to that. It's not something that is primarily needed every single day as you grind as a product designer. Definitely not. But it's something that um, is a trend and more and more uh, companies will want to, you know, let me see if I can sign in. More and more companies will, will probably want to add, you know, visual illustrations and engagement within their site but it's not something that I, I, I know nothing about illustration and no one really asked me about that. There was a moment where I was, I had an interview once and I was going to work for a company like two years or three years ago. And I, I talked to them over the phone and we we're, we we're chatting and the designer actually asked me about what's my, they said, what's my input or what's my um, knowledge of, of transitions and stuff like that, like animated transitions and animated things. And I said, I don't, I said today, I don't use a tool. I don't use it. I, 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 I'm pretty essential. And if there's a need for, you know, obviously we do minimal transitions and things like that. But for the most part, I said, I don't think there's a need for it right now in what I do. I said, but if we build an app and we need to transitions and we can, you know, that's something that we can look into. But personally, I don't do transitions. I don't do animated things like that. It's not part of my day to day. I said, and I was honest, I said, it's not part of my day-to-day -day at, at ADP, and it hasn't been for the last five years. And he goes, yeah. He goes, you're right. Actually, I was just wondering, you know, because I know it's a trend. So it was something where normally because I'm so, I'm basically, you know, I was so confident in who I am and what I know and what we do day-to-day, -day, I, I wasn't lying or anything. And I was like, I see it on Dribble, I see it, but to be honest with you, with all these transitions and cool animated things going on, it's like, you know what? It's not part of my day to day, to be honest with you. Um, it could be at certain companies and stuff like that, and certain apps, but for the most part, once you get behind the onboarding, most of the stuff that we see, most of the stuff that, stuff that we use day to day, the Instagrams, the Twitters, the Netflix, the Facebooks, the TikToks, all that stuff, every single app on the market, basically what do they have? They have minimal transitions from thing to thing and that's it. it you don't want transitions that distract you from, but it's like minimal transition, things that zoom out, zoom in, that's it. Zoom out, it hover effects, kind of zoom out, zoom in. Little minimal transitions basically throughout major apps. And to be honest with you, less in B2B or SaaS products and stuff like that. So let me see if there's any, what's up Pixel Geek? Yeah, I'm doing more streaming. This is cool. This is cool. Learning a lot as I go. Let me answer some other questions. As a self-taught UI designer, let me bring this one in. As a self-taught UI designer in working, I sometimes feel I know little. I have been struggling to get myself together from, from what to study and what to do part-time. I don't know exactly. I would have to read them. See, as a self-taught UI designer, I sometimes feel I know little. So that's me. 
Um, I've been struggling to find, get myself together. Okay, so here's the deal. As a self-taught UI designer, I understand what this person, so I'm gonna answer your question. The question was, as a self-taught designer, um, sometimes you could feel that um, there's a lot that we don't know, okay? This is me, this is talking from personal experience. I'm a self-taught designer coming from the streets, YouTube, friggin' taught myself how to design, build websites through a WYSIWYG and blah, blah, blah. It took me years to realize that even the people, like if you even went to school or a design school and learned something, guaranteed, on the job, you're, you're probably not even learning those, ex doing those exact things. Like for example, I saw this course and this guy was talking about like design theory and all this stuff and stuff that I don't really know anything about. Design think, I'm like, what is that? I don't know, it was design think. All these fancy terms that you learn in school, I guess, or design school or art center and blah, blah, blah. All I know is when it came time to, to build products and you're building apps, you're working with product leaders, product owners, you're looking at requirements and you're designing based on those requirements and you're spending time with developers trying to get that stuff developed and you're trying to push it into the market and see what people do with it. Anything outside of that, color theory, uh, freaking typography class, um, illustration class, uh, understanding customer journeys, flow charts, task flows, user flows, user research, all that stuff, trust me, it all comes back to common sense. Once you learn the basics, there's a lot that you don't, you, we think, because that's how we're, we're brought up. We think when we don't go to school and we teach ourselves, there's a lot of stuff that I don't know. And that, that could be true, but that's why it's always good to get with real designers like myself and learn the essentials. Trust me, learn the essentials. Let me show you a little illustration. So this is in, in anything that we do, in anything that we do, basically, so this is the long tail. All right, this is the essential stuff. All right, let me get another. All right. Um, this is just the platform here. All right, actually, screw it. So this stuff right here, this is the essential stuff. All right, and this is the long tail. What I say all the time is that you're going to be the long tail. There's a lot of stuff lots of stuff here, okay? You're gonna be learning new things daily, here and there, learning how to, there was, a, there, was a, there was a long time that I didn't really know how to use symbols in like, in, in I think it was Photoshop or Adobe Fireworks or what have you. I didn't know, I didn't understand the usage of symbols. And basically what that meant was <laughs> because somebody didn't teach me. I didn't know. So basically, if you have, think of these as artboards or screens. I had like 50 different screens, right? And I had a button on that screen. When I had to change that button to from blue to green, I had to go into each one of these, these screens and make that change. So basically, when I, had, when I was working with clients and I had like 50 different screens, like 50 screens and the clients was asking me for changes, I would go through, have to go through each 50 screens just to move stuff over. Boom, 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 boom. And I was making a boatload of money not knowing how to use these tools correctly. That's because I only learned the essentials and then what happened was I learned, oh, okay, eventually at some point, 
These things are part of the long tail. A lot of people are learning these things up front here and they're getting overwhelmed. All right, they're learning a bunch of stuff, non-essential things very early where it could benefit you, but is it really necessary to what you need to do? No. There's a lot there's a lot of stuff that you you don't know right now how to use your your iPhone or your Android device correctly, right? There's a lot of little gadgets, but what you need to know how to do, turn it on, answer the phone, text, and pull up apps. That's the essential stuff. There's a lot of stuff that you don't know, and that's the long tail. That's stuff that you can learn down the road. So as a self-taught designer, don't trip. Learn this stuff, like learn the essentials. Learn the essentials, learn how to design. Design well. Learn how to design. See this? This is good, beautiful design. Whether or not this is a real, legit app or not, or I've never seen anything like this in, in, in real life. But the point is, you learn how to design. Here's a guy that I like in here, Eric Hoffman. He's, my, he's one of my favorite designers. I've been following for like a decade probably. But this guy's legit. Eric Hoffman is his name. Look him up. I don't know what he does now. I don't know if he, I don't know if he owns his own agency, but anytime I see his work, I'm like, this dude's legit. His stuff is beautiful. Like, learn how to design like this, right? Study him. Study awesome designers. And once you learn how to design, that's essential number one. We don't care what he used, whether he used Figma, whether he used uh, uh, Adobe XD, whether he used Sketch to design these things, he knows how to design. That's number one. Number two, obviously there's a lot that goes into designing. And I teach always using a point of reference. I don't even know how to spell reference. Point of reference. So what I mean by a point of reference is, for example, I teach this in my product, my, my course. So if I was designing an app for a car, I would do a search on the web, on Google Images, Dribbble, Pinterest, for any apps that had automobiles. And what I would do, in there's a brainstorming phase where I, I, I build a mood board. Okay, so for example, I would take this particular design and I would build a mood board. Let me see, you bring up Sketch really quick. Let me see, you guys see that? Oh, you don't see that because I'm... Let me see if I can uh, share, let me sh share a sketch. All right. Let me fix it a little bit. All right, so basically what I would do in here, I would bring this into sketch or your app and I would build mood board. And basically I would just spend a whole hour and I would build hundreds of these. I would go out. And so first off is inspiration, right? This is number one is for inspiration. I would build a mood board and I would look at things and I would come up with a, a certain style. I teach this, I would come up with a, I would identify a certain style that I want my app to look like. That's number one. Number two, let me, uh, Go back to Google Chrome. So basically, um, the other thing is this, is always a, working as a point of reference. So for example, if I was building a landing page, I would type in the word landing page and I would come up to something like this, right? Same scenario, I would build a hundred, I would build my own visual, visual mood board based on that. And I do that for every component. So if I had to do a login page, if I had to do a calendar date picker, if I had to do uh, my own, if you know, 
uh, obviously like like um, charts, anything chart related, like stuff like this, like charts, I would go and do the same exercise. I would always do a, build a mood board and then I would identify something that I want to mimic as a part of my design and use that as a point of reference. So that's when I say design, we can all learn how to design that way, especially if we're coming from the streets. We don't have a design background because I didn't. And that's how I learned. So if I'm designing something, I'm always I'm using this common sense stuff and I'm building mood boards and I'm using a point of reference as I design things out. So that's the essential. Learn how to design. Stop. Don't worry about anything else that you don't know. You can always learn it. If you know how to design, next step, obviously, as a product designer, is the problem solving, critical thinking, and communication. You get those right, you're golden. Anything else you want to learn is long tail. Don't worry about that. Every, anything else is a long tail. Let me answer a few more questions. This is cool. I appreciate you guys coming up. Just going through this on average, how long do? Great question. Will says, how long on average do a personal project take? Great question. Um, when you get into the groove, a personal project, I think this is a really good question. How long does um, a personal project take? I say give yourself a, a timeline because if you give yourself, um, if you let yourself just kind of like naturally, naturally kind of like casually go about building a project, it can go down two months, three months. And now you're like, it took you 12 weeks to do this. But one time I, so I, that happened to me where I was just kind of like letting it sit for a while. I was like really feeling this project and it was just kind of like, the first couple of screens were really good. And I was like, ooh, this is cool. And then I did a project where I really needed to get a new project out and it took like three weeks or two weeks. Where one project took like two weeks and I was like, you know what? I really need to force myself when I'm doing new projects to force myself to actually keep myself to a timeline. So if you're really, if you're really like say, you know what? I'm going to start working on this project all week and you have the idea first off it comes with the idea that might I could take a weekend that could take a week or what have you once you get the idea that's what I'm saying it's a, it could take three weeks um, two weeks if you're just grinding that means you spend a whole few several hours today tomorrow and then you build this page and then it's like you're just really rocking and rolling you're sketching out stuff you're you're rocking and rolling and um, you know that first week, you can get a lot done if you're really focused. But if you're just casually going through stuff, I'll pick it up tomorrow. I'll do something here. It can go, you know, several weeks. I always say like, but so I think you're, you're, if you're just now starting out, it could take a while. It could take several weeks to, to complete a project. But when you get going, give yourself a deadline. Like challenge yourself to say, hey, I want to I start working on these projects and get this out. I want to complete. And no, you don't have to get it out. But what can I do within a two week period? Can I really force myself to, to build a project? You know? Is it important to grow your connections if you want to work for big companies rather than... Um... So is the question is, is it important to grow your, connect, your connections if you want to work for big companies rather than just focus on a solid portfolio? Um, yes, both. Building your connections is huge for, for um, just networking in general and, and moving along and making moves within you know, your career. Building connections is always great, always great. Um, uh, you know, so while you're, while, you're, while, you're, while you're working on your portfolio, which I think we should all be doing that every single day, like chipping away at it, you know, 30 minutes here, an hour here some days you might do two hours you always should save a portion for applying for jobs and then save a portion for connecting you know always stay active on on linkedin liking things posting things um, doing whatever you can you know commenting on things and staying active on linkedin connecting with people 
uh, recruiters and things like that? Always. That should be a whole part of your whole groove. I think you should be really active and really plan out your day and do all that stuff, like grind on your portfolio, update your resume, update your LinkedIn, stay active, apply to jobs, five to 10 jobs a day if you can, and then rest for a few months once you land a job. You know, pop a bottle, Oh, I got a job. Thank you. You know, you know, this feels great. I got this job, you know, and then because you're going to be so focused on that job, adrenaline, you got to like get up early, go to that job, perform for that particular job. Um, a lot of times, you know, when you get when you get that new job, you get there and you're learning and you're trying to like do your best. So you're learning at night, right? That first three months, three to four months, you know, several months is going to be tough because you really want to get into a group. After three, four months, you'll slowly start to settle into, you know, your role and then you can start just grinding on the side again. So, um, Danny said, I have a final interview tomorrow for my first UX design job. Yep, the exercise is to identify two areas of the company's website that need an update. Any last uh, minute tips, do's and don'ts. Um, yeah, so basically, don't criticize the website unless there's very low hanging fruit, like little things, but that's not the biggie. The, uh, so Danny has a, you know, obviously an interview tomorrow. And so the, the challenge is look at a website and um, identify two areas that you can improve on. So the easiest way, honestly, is look at the whole low hanging fruit and things that you feel that are not, that's not user friendly. But most sites today, especially most sites, some companies, have sites that are that's legit. So this is what I would do. I would identify and talk and say, hey, a couple of things that I would do before I actually made changes, I want to understand what are we trying to accomplish with the site, okay? So it's basically your thought process on how you would approach a design, okay? You can't go to a site and redesign it just on a whim because you don't know if they have a million amazing users and they don't want a, a, a pixel touched on that website or that app, right? So you have to come in. They really want to get your thinking. How would you approach something? How do you think? So the way I would go in and say, first off, um, this site's cool, you know, this, 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 but I, I, before I made any changes, what I would want to know is what do we want to accomplish in this site you know do we want to convert higher do we want to you know improve our brand recognition um, do we want to lead users to a particular product do we want them do we want them to um, you know do we want to convert more if it's a, it's a site where they're purchasing things or they're filling out a form what's our goal based on that feedback i would make recommendations so if, and then you can give a couple of examples, you know, like if we wanted to convert higher, you know, one thing we can do is add more case studies, more test customer testimonials, feature the product a little bit better, maybe add a video, what have you, whatever it is on that. And we would test. It's all about your, your thought process. And then you would do a B testing. So one, one, one thing that you don't want to do, a lot of people will try to do somebody hit me up once. Um, and they said, Mike, you know, I, I went to an interview. They had me want to redesign this 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 uh, page. It was a site. It was like a transit site. They it was for a transit company, and um, they wanted um, they wanted this person to do the same thing. And this person actually redesigned it, and in my opinion, made the experience worse. So that's just my personal opinion, and I, I didn't want to tell them tell them like, ouch. Like you made it worse, but that's not what you want to do. Let me turn on this light really quick. So yeah, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to design something to make it worse. You just want to give them your thoughts. So Asia said it's their mobile splash screen. Yep. So when it comes to animation stuff like that, um, someone was asking me about animations and and she's saying it's on their splash screen. Yeah. 
so yeah, like on a lot of onboarding stuff on mobiles, yeah, you're gonna have a lot of animation and stuff like that, but is it needed for designers? No, it's a nice to have, but um, it's not something that you need in order to land, you know, product design jobs. It's not something you use every day. Yep. Someone said don't involve don't involve a lot of transition is it's actually a lot of it's impact it's, it's expensive on the performance side you know have you worked as a remote ux designer if so what's your experience with it yep Asia said um um have you worked as a remote ux designer if so what's your experience with it i'm in vegas and there's not a lot of ux design jobs yeah so basically um i tweeted this the other day is zoom like using Zoom and and online calls is basically an essential skill now. Everybody should should get familiar with it. Everybody should just get used to it. Everybody should get comfortable, you know, on camera showing their face and stuff like that, um, uh, because that is very common. And yes, um, remote UX design jobs uh, is. Basically, just like in-house design jobs, the, the only difference is you don't have to go to meetings, like walk physically to meetings. You have to have meetings. You have calls, 30-minute calls, hour-long calls over um, Zoom and stuff like that. Most of the calls that you're rocking and rolling, you're not really showing your face because um, it's a lot of impact on the CPU. So basically, a lot of people just talk um, like just talk through audio and you're showing your, your your picture of your face and stuff like that and you're doing that throughout the day and then you're getting off that and then you're sharing your screen when it comes time to sharing the stuff that you work you do and that's it and then you're delivering those on whatever zeppelin or however and you're getting that over to your developers and you're working with your developers basically everything comes down to zoom calls screen sharing when a developer is talking to you and trying to point something out or when you design a screen and you're trying to you know show that to a stakeholder or to a client it all comes down to screen share and getting familiar with zoom so um i've used everything from blue jeans to microsoft teams to um webex uh, zoom um, everything they're all the same basically interface share screen stop cancel you know, easy stuff, but you just you just get feel familiar with it. And I think um, when you have an opportunity to to go on a Zoom call, like for example, I have another. I'm going to be. Um, I have another Zoom call coming up this Thursday, from six to seven ish, or I might go past seven again. But at six o'clock this Thursday, I have a a, a Zoom uh, meetup. So basically, I'm going to send that link out. If you haven't, you know, registered, I'm going to send that out. Register join in you know have an opportunity i'm going to have a bunch of q a and you have an opportunity to just kind of get familiar with it and i'm going to keep promoting it and say hey it's essential getting familiar with zoom getting familiar with showing your face getting familiar with uh what, what have you and um you know something that we're going to need i think from now even in the in the future in 2021 and beyond because I believe there's going to be a hiring surge in the coming year and more people are going tech. There's going to be a lot of companies, a lot of investments in to tech, product leadership, development, product designers. And a lot of these companies, a lot of this innovation, a lot of this investment, when these companies are growing, a lot of this stuff will be remote. A lot of it will be. There'll be some companies trickling back into the office here and there, but a lot of it will be remote. So, um, Yep. Asia says she's copying designs. Adding a little twist to it. Definitely. You get good. When you copy designs, you eventually you you copy designs, you add your own little twist to it. You're like, how could I change this color and you know just tweak it just a little bit? Let me see, it reminds me. Let me answer a few questions. Imagine you design at 10 degrees here. <laughs> hey, what's that? I'm getting ready to present a product design assignment for a job I applied. I'll be interviewed by three engineers. What should I expect? Getting ready to present a product design assignment. 
uh, engineers present your stuff. So the question was, I'm getting ready to present a product design assignment for a job I apply to. Um, I'll be interviewed by three engineers. What should I expect? That's a difficult one. Um, if you're getting challenged by front end developers and, and, and upfront, that could, they're going to ask you, they're going to want to know how you would, you know, basically what your thoughts are because they're not so extensive into you user research and UX design, but obviously uh, talk about your process and your screens and stuff like that. And, um, you know, here's one thing I would, I would add to your presentation. So if I'm showing my screens to a designer or a developer and engineers are there, what I, what I know over my 20 years of experience, take this, this is a free golden nugget. nugget. Every designer, every company that I've ever been with or every developer, they're all different. They have their own likes and dislikes, their own tools they use and tools they don't use their own process, their own, you know, whatever, their way of doing things. So what I tell everyone in my interviews, I always say that exact thing. I say every developer is different. It's important for me to talk to them because as a designer, I could work outside an agile project. I can work outside of a development process and in easily integrate with any process. So if you say, hey, we like getting our designs, you know, added to Zeppelin, or we like getting our designs through, uh, you know, Envision Inspect, or we like getting our designs through this, and we we use the Google Material Design Framework and UI Kit and this and that, or we're using a third party, um, you know, framework that has this, this, this. I can, uh, I can build with that right you can build with that you can work with any process every developer is different it's our job as designers to build relationships with, des with developers understand you know that we're going to come up with our proposals and our designs and we're going to work together with them um, to you know so that we're on the same page and after a few weeks we'll we'll, we'll fill out our process and, and you do that. So make sure you, you, you kind of throw that in there that, hey, every, every developer is different and it's your job to kind of, you know, you know build good relations with them to understand that and you can work with any process, um, you know. Someone said, should we learn to code? Uh, it's not necessary. Um, you shouldn't. Thanks, Franklin. Uh, you shouldn't learn to, uh, should you learn to code? Um, the answer is no, you don't have to learn to code in order to be a product designer. Um, you use Webflow, no code movement, but you don't need to know how to code. Honestly, 100%, you don't need to know how to code in order to be a product designer. Great question by Will. Here's my here's my take on you here's my take on dribble trends. Here's why you have to be careful when you go to dribble. Let me share my screen again. Um, so we'll ask a really good question. Does following dribble trends in your UX design process designs uh, let me see, wait, what was the question? Hurt you when trying to find UX design position. So what I realized is that there's only a handful of designers that I actually truly lean on in Dribbble because they design realistic, realistic, modern day uh, aesthetics and visuals. <clears throat> Case in point, this guy, Eric Hoffman, he's legit. Everything that he does, in my opinion, is in my opinion, is real world stuff. Like it, it makes sense. But there is stuff out in Dribble, in Dribble land, like this. Like, what is it? 
I mean, I know there's stuff out in dribble land that is just not realistic. I don't use day to day. It's not something that I, I really focus on. Like, so for example, if you're like, I, you don't see me designing things that's unrealistic. I can't find it right now, but you get what I'm saying? There's a lot of stuff. Like, for example, this is art. This is very, this is like, this is very artsy and very visually appealing. But to be honest with you, no, there's not an app that I've ever used in the last two years, food wise, that had anything like this. Okay, it's just not realistic. And there's a lot of this stuff going on on Dribble that you know it's not realistic because in a day to day, when you're dealing with real customers, real customers say that's cool, but uh, nah, I'm good. I want to see, you know, pictures of the real food or something along those lines, right? And so all this stuff gets changed up. It's shown on Dribble, but in real life, think about all the apps we use. Any of the apps we use day to day, does it look like anything like this? Netflix, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. None of these apps look like this stuff. None. It's because in the real world, when you're designing real apps for real people, all this fancy stuff. So the question is, yeah, you have to be careful. Don't your your site should you should mimic very modern day designs, but make sure that they're positioned in a real world situation. And you don't get caught up where all your stuff looks like dribble, like, like con work. Think of a concept car. You know, if all your stuff looked like this and you were trying to get a job working for, you know, whatever, if your stuff looked like this and you're trying to get a, a real job designing like the latest Toyota Corolla or Toyota Camry, I mean, they're going to be like, yeah, your stuff is beautiful, but that's beautiful, but that's not realistic. We want some real life. We want some real stuff that moms is going to use. You know, you need to build a, a freaking minivan. You know, moms doesn't go to the grocery store in this. So think about what you're trying to get to and be careful because you can get caught up in con too much concept stuff. Let me check. Let me check a few more questions. What's up, Joe? When it comes to UI inspiration, person projects, at what point do you say to yourself, I have enough material? Good question. A few more questions. This is a great question. Joe said, uh, when it comes to UI inspiration for personal projects, at what point do you say, um, I have enough material? And sometimes I feel like I overdo it. Yep. Um, so, Great point. So when you're building your mood board, if you're going to dribble and you're going out to Pinterest and you're going out to Google Images and you're building a mood board, a collection of inspirational stuff, limit your limit it to a certain degree. At some point, take a step back. When you have 10, 10 screens like that, sometimes you can overdo it and now you're overwhelmed. Now you built you took the internet and you brought the internet to your to your mood board. <laughs> and now you're like I'm still, I'm back to square one. It's too much stuff out there. What I would do is be, 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 uh, be intentional on only bringing in the stuff that really go through little phases. Let me bring in 10 things that inspires me. One, two, three, four, it gets a 10. Now you say, I only want to, let me, let me, these things inspire me because they just look visually appealing. Take a moment to figure out why each one of those are visually appealing. Like I say, I'll look at this one. I'm like, I like the color. This one, I love the layout. This one, I love the illustration. This one, I love the branding. And then go into a second phase where you just minimize that. Hey, what do I want my overall brand to look like? And only bring those in and say, now you got like two or three, right? And say, I'm going to go with something like this. 
This one has some beautiful colors, some purple colors, some illustrations. I want my site to have this. For this particular site, my branding, I want it to look like this. And so you definitely have to minimize your mood board. Don't just go crazy and bring in everything because then you're, you'll be overwhelmed. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Hey, Franklin, I appreciate you, bro. <laughs> or I, so Gary said, did you, did you tell him that you made it, you made it worse? Um, so somebody actually um, was doing a design. And in my opinion, I said, I actually, in a nice way, I actually um, corrected him. I said, you don't want to do this because you don't know if you're, there's no way of telling that if you just now disrupted a user experience, basically, it's when somebody is actually trying to complete a, doing a take home job and you're trying to redesign a site. My, I, I always say, don't just redesign the site. Um, and somebody actually showed me an example and they, in my opinion, they made it worse because I actually like the current one better and, and they didn't have that heavy of a, a visual design aesthetics. And so I did tell them in a nice way. A few more questions. Any advice for writing case studies? Working on that right now. Great, great, uh, great question. I'm not, I'm not an expert. Um, Andre talked about case studies are great to have. On your, I'm not an expert in writing case studies. A lot of people that I know, a lot of people that I've taught, a lot of students of mine that have learned some stuff. Then they show me their portfolio. I'm like, dang, your case studies are awesome. I never really know know how to. Long answer is, short answer is, I don't know how to do case studies. Um, if I got to the point to where I was doing case studies, um, if I was doing case studies on my portfolio, which I'm not, I would just do the same exercise. I would do a search for beautiful example case studies and mimic that. I would find the ones that I like and just mimic that. What's the best site to learn AR? Um, UX that I don't know. That's a great question. Is AR artificial intelligence? I don't know. Or VR? I don't know. I don't know what AR UX is, but I don't know that particular answer. What is AR UX? AR UX. I don't know what AR UX. Augmented reality. Oh. Um, that I don't know. It's way beyond my pay grade. So, hey, Mike, how important? A few more questions. How important do you think? Uh, how important do you think uh, it is to network on LinkedIn? Can it be done just effectively on another platform? Best way, um, best way to network is good. Good question. Best way to network. What I do is I don't. I didn't really go out and like chat to people, but I think I would now. I always try to connect with with uh, recruiters, I would say, just connect with recruiters. I would say that's your first step. Just try to hit up as many recruiters as you can every single day and just, hey, you know, I just wanna let you know, I just wanted to connect with you and you know, I'm looking for work and, and maybe we can connect and build a relationship. That's it, have a little script and just connect with every single recruiter. They'll be like, thanks, you know, thanks Zaid and uh, you know, and then just build that way, build that way, build that way. Um, so it is important. LinkedIn is, in my opinion, it's the number one tool that I think is out there for all of us to for for recruiters and stuff to hit us up and um, you know and and find work. Are there others? There could be. I don't know exactly which ones. What's up, Anthony? Um, no, that Zoom meetup. Zoom meetup. I'm gonna be doing a Zoom uh, meetup this week. Um, all right, I'm sorry. Thursday. I appreciate the uh, the sticker, the um, super sticker, uh, Franklin. Appreciate you, bro. Um, hit me up anytime. Um, any questions? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'll prioritize your stuff. Uh, hit me up anytime. And um, most definitely. So AR. A lot of people were talking about AR, augmented reality. You know, which is which is cool. It's, it's something you appreciate it, Joe. Um, so. Um, I don't know too much about augmented reality. To be honest with you, uh, I, it's it's something that I, it's not in my day to day. 
but obviously it's something that's very like important could be future driven and stuff like that and um uh you know something that i'll look into i appreciate all you guys one last last um last question and i'll wrap it up as my dog is barking in the background now just kidding this is a great this is a great question any whiteboarding tips i actually have a really good video in my membership at mluxacademy.com free for 14 days check it out i'm going to be redesigning that home i did that page that site really quick a long time ago using kajabi i'm going to redo it in the next month i'm going to have some new designs new layout new um uh membership offering lots of new stuff coming but in that so basically the question I'm going to answer is any whiteboarding tips. Last question of the night. I'll leave you guys to go have dinner. Yes. When I white when I when I whiteboard, here's my whiteboarding tip. Let me give this to you guys really really quick. So basically the my whiteboarding tip is to write out your thoughts. So if you have a whiteboarding session and they're actually watching you, they give you, they, they ask you about something and then you now need to whiteboard your, your thoughts or whatever onto a screen, this is what I would do. This is my tip. Always start by writing out your thoughts and write out your process. Okay? So write out your thoughts and write out your process. So basically um, what I would do is... I would start by writing out my problem solving process because that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I would say number one, I wanna find the root, the root problem, okay? Like what are we, what's, what exactly are we solving for? That's number one, even if that person gave you the root problem. Number two, I'm gonna brainstorm. And then number three, obviously, this is my overall process, so now, Basically, we talk about the root and then restate, always restate the root problem. So if they gave you the problem, say, hey, we're designing an app for people to take, to, to um, create or to, uh, uh, to, I don't know, make an appointment online for their pet at the local, you know, pet shop or pet veterinarian shop. So just kind of write that out. And so as you're writing out, just let them know that you're kind of brainstorming. So and then basically you can say, I know we're going to have to have, um, you can just, basically you're writing out your thoughts. And so what I would do is as I'm sketching and I'm brainstorming, I'm just whiteboarding my thoughts out. And so I'll say, okay, so as I'm thinking about this particular app, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to brainstorm and I'm going to visit other apps on the market to get an idea on what type of experience that, that exists out in the market. And then you can say you can go, go to you know competitors and once I go there, I'm going to brainstorm and now I'm going to um, itemize my requirements or not or prioritize my requirements and so you can list out requirements one we need you know landing page two um, customers need to be able to register uh, three customers need to be able to um, select you know to uh, what do you call it uh, uh, fill out a visit or something I don't know what the exact term is and then you start brainstorming as you go and now you can then, once you, once you do all this, the whiteboard session really for me is for you, is for us to understand your thoughts. If you did a whiteboard session and basically you had, you didn't talk to, talk to me about your process and you said, well, I'm going to build this screen and I'm going to build this screen and it's going to be like this for mobile. Um, here is the search or here is the hamburger menu and here is the search box and I'm going to build a dashboard. You're jumping the gun. Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. And so obviously I don't know the exact um, exercise, but basically once you get the just ask questions as you go and interact with that person 
And that, in my, in my opinion, is a great whiteboard session because there's nobody that should be able to go on a whiteboard and, you know, you, you, sometimes you'd be lucky. No, not everyone's as creative to go, hey, I'm just going to start innovating and I'm going to build the next Snapchat and it's going to make a gazillion bucks and, and so forth. So show your process. Think out loud as you're on your whiteboard. That's my tips for um, doing whiteboard sessions. Think out loud. Think out loud. Think out loud. Show your process. Ask questions. Anyway, guys, uh, appreciate appreciate everybody for chat for coming in, chiming in. Thanks, Franklin, for the super 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 chat. And uh, I'll try to do this more definitely um, in in uh, on a regular basis on Tuesdays. And uh, look out. I'll be hitting everybody up. Definitely, um, I'll be doing a Zoom call, a free Zoom meetup this Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific um, Daylight Time. And uh, everybody have a good night. All right? Thanks, guys, for everything. We'll talk soon.